much, everybody, for being here today. I'm the author of Powers of a Girl and host of Earth's Mighty Show, Lorraine Singh. Thank you guys so much for coming. But we have some amazing panelists that are joining us today. Please welcome Court Lane, the SVP of Animation and Family Entertainment, as well as executive producer of Marvel Rising. Sana Ananat is here, who is our VP of Content and Character Development, as well as co-executive producer of Marvel Rising. Please welcome the voice of Ghost Spider, a.k.a. Gwen Stacy, Dove Cameron. The voice of Quake, a.k.a. Daisy Johnson, Chloe Bennett. The voice of Squirrel Girl, a.k.a. Doreen Green, Milana Vitro. The voice of Miss Marvel, a.k.a. Kamala Khan, Catherine Cobra. Patriot, aka Rayshawn Lucas, Camille McFadden, <laughs> VP of Animation Current Series and Development, as well as co executive producer of Marvel Rising, Marsha Griffin, <laughs> and writer of Marvel Rising Initiation Shorts and Marvel Rising Secret Warriors, the film, Margaret Scott. Yeah. Thank you all so much for being here today. So let's get into it. Dub, let's kick off with you. <laughs> Support. I got excited. Um, so you play Ghost Spider, who a lot of people know as Gwen Stacy. Can you talk a little bit about what her relationship is like with her father, George Stacy, and who she is as a person? Yeah, so, um, hi guys. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is so cool. Um, <laughs> so basically, um, Gwen Stacy, or Ghost Spider as she is uh, with us for Rising, um, she has this very complex relationship with her father because he's the chief of police. And not only is that, uh, you know, a sort of a initial struggle for her, but he also personally has a big um, sort of a judgment of Ghost Spider, and he thinks that she's more of a menace than a hero. Um, and it creates this kind of tension. She has to live this double life, and she has to keep it from him, which, as you can imagine, would be the most stressful thing for a young girl. Um, so there's, yeah, there's lots of tension. There's lots of um, kind of love lost, and there's a lot of places to go in the story with that relationship. Um, and as far as she goes, just as a person, she's very bright, she's incredibly sassy, smart, very funny and sarcastic. Um, she, a lot like me. Yeah, I'm like <laughs> Dove. <laughs> um, but she's really sweet and, you know, she wants that relationship with her father. She wants to be the hero that she sees him as and she wants to be the heroes that she sees uh, all around her. And uh, she has a bit of an uphill battle, but, but she, I think she'll win your hearts and I'm really honored to be able to voice her for you guys. Chloe Bennett, you are no stranger to the Marvel Ow! Universe. Ow! As you know, I see three quakes, I stare at Kate. Oh, oh, quakes, 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 I love it. Love you guys. So you've already done five seasons of Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. as yes. Quake. How is Quake different in this series? So, she's more purple. <laughs> <laughs> than ever before. Ever before. Um, she is younger, so she's like a teen Quake. Well, she's a lot more like Skye. So it's kind of fun to get to voice the character that I thought I was going to audition for, and then all of a sudden I'm like a moody goth superhero. <laughs> um, so so um, she's kind of she's 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 younger. She has a little bit more spunk, more a, a little doesn't take things as seriously. But I'm still excited to be a Shield agent and pretty confident in her skill with film. And and what is her relationship relationship or shype with those? <laughs> well. So, you guys on Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. already had a bit of a contentious relationship as those you characters. Mean? You mean uh, a fight in the what? snow? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but what can you tell us about Quake and Ghost Spider's dynamic? Not that much, because I don't want to give anything away. It's completely different from... Well, it's not totally... Well, you'll just you'll just yeah. have to wait. And see. It's not Ruby and Daisy. No, it's very. Different. But I actually think at the end there, I mean, I hope you guys are caught up with that at this point if you've seen it. But I, I, <laughs> at the end there with, with Ruby and Daisy, they had like a a moment. There was almost a coming together. Or yo yo ruined it. Bro yo yo. Bro <laughs> bro. Um, but it's it's actually just a weird coincidence that we get to 
work together on this Twice. again. I know. It's the best. It's so Woo. fun. Lovely. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, Milana, welcome huh? to the Marvel Universe. <laughs> 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 so, uh, can I tell you that just someone telling me welcome to the Marvel Universe sends goosebumps down my spine? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Squirrel Girl is such a fan favorite character. So much love for Squirrel Girl. Can you tell us a little bit of her powers of a squirrel and powers of a girl? And also about her tiniest best friend. Uh, she's also a Milana favorite. Um, <laughs> yeah, she can, you know, obviously she has a giant fluffy tail, and if you don't see it, it's because it's stuffed deep in her pants. <laughs> how? Um, how? I, it's science and magic put together in a cartoon animation. <laughs> uh, but it's, you know, she's, the thing I think that makes her really special is that she's unabashedly goofy while being smart and strong. She's very capable, and I think, you know, one of the things that we're always looking for in our heroes is to provide something, is, is to provide permission for us to also be those things. And so even just playing her, I get to channel all of the goofiest parts of myself, and I think that as people watch this series, they'll be able to free up a little more too. And I hope, I hope. And then Tippy is my littlest friend. Uh, Tippy is a squirrel. She's my best friend. Um, is is hard for me because I always want to kiss her. Um, like me, not squirrel. Doreen has way more self restraint than that. Um, but she's uh, she's kind of like the best sidekick you could want. And in, in some ways, I kind of work as her sidekick because we really are partners in this. And she works as a liaison between me and the rest of the squirrel community. <laughs> yeah, any squirrels here tonight? No? Oh, Just one in the yeah. yeah. Squirrel squad. Wow! That's your tail? Is that a tail? Or is that another squirrel? Oh, okay. Wow, how do you fit oh. that in your pants? <laughs> wow. Um, wonderful. So, also, I have to say, uh, Kat, now you have voiced Kamala quite a bit for yes. Marvel's Avengers Black Panther Quest, Ooh. as well as Marvel's Spider-Man. Yes. Yes. Uh, what is new and different about Kamala and this group and Kamala and what she's going through in this story? Uh, well, I think what we, we always see Kamala in the Avengers series with people that, with heroes that have been heroes for a while. And she's, you know, kind of trying to prove herself and isn't really sure. And right now, in, in what we see here, it's her and a bunch of other heroes that are sort of coming into their powers. And she's got this really great relationship with Squirrel Girl, which it's easy to be best friends with Milana. Um, that, that's, that's one of the most fun dynamics that I've, I've gotten to play. And also, we get to see a lot of you know where Kamala comes from, her family. Uh, her background, and she also brings a lot of emotion to this that we don't, we haven't seen in the past. So, Kat, can you please around. say something about this situation over here? <laughs> oh, that's, that's, yeah. that's my husband. <laughs> he wanted to dress up as Kamala, and I couldn't. I didn't. I. Why would I stop him? <laughs> like, it's so cute. Most romantic. That's Carl, by the way. He's not just my husband. His name is Carl. <laughs> Carl, you're a lovely Miss Marvel. Um, and so. that gentleman is true love. <laughs> I want to know what true love is there. It's right. Relationship goal. <laughs> uh, so, Camille, uh, now, how do you connect with Rayshawn Lucas, who is Patriot, but also, what is it like to join the Marvel Universe? Okay. Um... <laughs> What? <laughs> one more time. <laughs> is that number two? Let's start with the first one. Okay. Which is, uh, how do you connect with Rayshawn Lucas? What do you feel you guys have in common? Um, I feel like me and Rayshawn have uh, this determination. Um, Rayshawn is, the, I'm about to use a log line. <laughs> uh, not all heroes are super, and he doesn't have a superpower yet. <laughs> okay, I, I've done this all day. <laughs> I messed it up the last time, so I, I got it right this time. Thanks, and then guys. six um, women corrected. <laughs> <laughs> but um, he he doesn't have a superpower, so um, him not having that superpower, he has to work 
10 times harder uh, to j prove to everyone and to himself why he deserves to be a part of S.H.I.E.L.D. and you know him working under uh, Captain America um, puts added pressure on him to, to hold up to his legacy you know of honesty and integrity and order so um, I connect with him with his determination you know him proving to himself and to others why he should be where he is I love that. And how is it joining the Marvel Universe? Everybody nice? <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah, is everybody, everybody nice? You better say we're nice. Say yes. Everybody, oh, everybody's really nice. incredible. And I'm not just saying that because everybody here is from Marvel. <laughs> no, no, no. But um, no, they've been super welcoming. Um, this experience has been incredible. Um, to be a superhero is something that you dream of as a kid. And for me, for me to be able to check that off, my list is uh, <laughs> it's amazing. Well, congrats. Uh, so, Mr. Court Lane, over here to my left. Hello, sir. Hi. Hi. Um, so, you guys, you know, really got to work with the show from the very beginning. Where did this idea arise from? And, uh, wow. yeah, nice please go. Makes me stronger. <laughs> Where did it arise from, and why did you feel this was sort of an important story to tell? Well, first of all, the, there's been this exponential growth in fandom among girls and women over the last several years. It's been, it very well. it's been incredible, and, and all these publishing characters that have just popped with women and girls, and movie box office, and apparel, and all this stuff. So there was clearly this need, and so we had lots of conversations with the girls, and they were dying for something like this. And we talked to them about which characters they would connect with, and what kind of stories they wanted to hear, and, and, and from all of that information, we knew that they wanted Wanted, uh, characters from different backgrounds, they asked for different body types, um, and we knew which characters we felt they would connect with, and they told us. And so we went out to writers and had writers pitch, and Margaret nailed it in her pitch. And from that, we knew we had the core story and, um, and worked with these amazing actors and Sana and Marsha um, on building this story and hopefully others. I love it. So, Sana. You uh, were very integral in Miss Marvel becoming a character. In many ways, I feel she's a little you. Um, <laughs> what is it like to see Kamala take on this life in, in, in the real world on the screen? And uh, what, is, what about the story is sort of personal to you? Uh, well, first of all, I feel like we like just tricked everyone. I tricked everyone, and now uh, brown people are taking over. <laughs> so, whoops, sorry, not sorry. Uh, it, it's really, really awesome. This is incredible. I mean, uh, this started about Miss Marvel started about five years ago, and now she's sort of everywhere. And now Kat Kavari's in my life all the time, and it's amazing. And it's now spawned into this incredible um, film with these amazing, talented people right in front of me. So for me, it's um, it really uh, nothing I could really ever imagine. It's much, much, much bigger. Um, and so incredible, and it just goes to show that if you really believe in an idea and you understand the importance of this idea and the importance of making sure that we have characters that are like every single one of us, it will be successful. Surprise! Girls like powerful characters that look just like them. Yes. And and that's why we're doing this, because all of the characters that we have in this show, like Ms. Marvel, um, have so many different fans, and they've grown over the last few years because of the fact that we're telling them in a really authentic way. And we really wanted to do this story because of the fact that we believe in these characters, and we believe in our fans, and that they're going to come out and support us. Um, and, and this is sort of you guys being here today is really testament to that. So thank you guys so much for showing up, for you wearing your awesome cos cosplay costumes. Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel's right here up in front. Yay. Uh, so no, it's, it's, it's really, it's personal, it's emotional. Uh, I do this because I really love it and I believe in it. And um, I'm so excited for you guys to, to, see, to see what we've got in store. It's really special. Well, I'm excited for everyone to see what is in store as well. Um, Marsha, you got to be part of the development of this team. What was it about this team that you felt like these were the right characters to be all together? 
Well, when we were looking at building this series, um, there's always a tendency when you're talking about superheroes, which it's, it's not necessarily a bad thing, but it's that bigger is better. So you're talking about, you know, more powers and more explosions and more world ending stuff, which is great for a lot of times. But in the case of this project, sometimes characters get lost. The bigger the stuff happens, the more great characters will tend to get lost or buried. And we wanted to focus on the characters. So we wanted to come up with with a group of diverse and unique and charismatic uh, young heroes that we could put together in stories that sort of represented not the world coming to an end, but the world outside your window, which is what we try and focus on at Marvel a lot of times. That's our, one of our philosophies. So we wanted to take real superhero stakes, but also make them genuine, and we wanted to reflect that in the characters, and I think we've done that. I mean, we have all of these fantastic actresses and actors, and um, we have a character, you know, like we've said, that has the power of a girl, let, let alone a squirrel. She's got powers of a girl, so that's pretty powerful. Um, and we wanted to just bring them together, and, and in the case of this series, it was like, having all these young girls and young women in the audience that they get to, and young men, they get to see themselves on the screen. It doesn't happen a lot. Um, uh, not in the truly authentic way that we're trying to do that with this series. So that was what we were trying to create with the characters and have that reflected, and I think we've been pretty successful so far. Marsha, to add on to that, I think, um, you know, when when I was growing up, we got to see a lot of action-adventure series and films that starred lots of men, and I had no problem putting myself in those characters' shoes and seeing myself in them and feeling like... I could relate to them. And now it's really exciting because we've made this amazing series and soon to be film with this mostly female cast. And I'm, as much as I'm excited for women to feel and girls to feel empowered by this story, I'm really excited for young boys to see themselves in these characters. Yeah. You know, because when you can see yourself in someone who's not like you, it creates a greater sense of of community, empathy, and growth, and, and, um, and understanding so that people aren't so otherized. I think that's true for the diversity that's represented in this show as well. Seeing people who aren't like you do things that you can really relate to, I think really helps build peace on this planet, which is really also what we're trying to do here at Marvel. Yeah. She dropped my mic for me. We are good. Okay, I'm done. Mic drop. Um, Sorry, Megan. You have gotten to be the writer behind these stories, which is so exciting. Um, what inspired you uh, from other stories or from Marvel stories? And uh, what characters were some of your favorite to script? Um, well, so obviously I'm a big comic book fan, um, and so I definitely read the source. It's funny because it's great to get to write Daisy because I remember reading her in this, the, that Caterpillar Files Hickman run that he did. Nods, yes, comic book fans. Uh, I think it was. I think it was also called Secret Wars. I totally forgot. Um, and like I've read Miss Marvel from like issue one. And, no, yeah, I don't know. Um, and. Uh, so we, I wanted to be honest with the and honor the source material, but also I wanted to. I don't know. I mean, I had my 18th birthday in New York when I went there to college, and I, I remember like living with my roommate Jen, and it was like two girls against the city. And I really, when I got the chance to write Kamala and Doreen, it was like two best friends in New York, you know, going going to take over the city. It really felt like that, you know. And there was a lot of like neat little places where everything intersected where I thought of, you know, like, I played drums and I was the angsty drum teen in high school and so, and then Gwen Stacy played drums and it was so, and then it was like, oh, I remember being like a young professional woman being like, gosh, I hope everyone in this meeting listens to me and then so like that sort of was the same thing with Quake and, um, you know, there's a lot of really, I didn't want these characters to be the jock and the brain and the whatever, like I wanted them to be more complex than that. And I wanted everyone to have a chance. It's funny because you talked about the shows when we were growing up. And I remember like watching, um, I used to watch X-Men, and uh, I really wanted to be Jean Grey. I love Jean Grey. Um, and she, yeah, she's just an awesome character. 
But she had like this thing where she would always like pass out after she used her powers. And I remember, I remember like playing on the playground and I was like, I'm Jean Grey, I'm gonna lift the truck. And everyone's like, now pass out. And I was like, no. And, I, and that hurt as a kid. And so it was really important for me when I was writing Marvel Rising, but this isn't a girl show in the sense that the guy characters were gonna have, now you sit down, like this is for us. I wanted everyone to have a real drive. I wanted to, as a writer, have a personal connection to everyone, and I wanted everyone to get to play. So you none know? of the men faint after they use No, their none of the men And it's actually funny, because even though Squirrel Girl is the most fun to write, um, actually, I am basically Patriot. And, yeah. And yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Whenever I wrote Patriot, I was like, what would I say at this moment? <laughs> so he's, he's very rules oriented and sort of like, I don't know that this is the best idea, um, but I am going to give it my best. <laughs> so. um, well, you know, I actually have a question for the audience now. Um, who wants to see two animated shorts right now? Yeah. <laughs> Check out the first two Marvel Rising initiation shorts.